In today's video, I will show you how to implement the Flutter Rate by App package and all its options in your app. This package will allow you to kindly ask users to rate your app if certain conditions like install time and number of launches are met. As explained in my last video, there are many other packages that you can use to achieve that. But in my opinion, the Rate My App package is the most complete one and with the most options to implement this functionality. For this video, we will first install the package and configure it. Then, we will start by implementing a minimal example of the package. After that, we will implement an advanced example and we will use more parameters for more complex scenarios. We will finish with some important considerations that you need to keep in mind when testing this package. This video is part of a playlist where I go over different Flutter packages that you can use to request reviews from your app users. The link to the playlist will be in the description below. The Rate My App package supports requested reviews natively inside the app or to the App Store listed page. But to launch the review without leaving the app, the user's device needs to meet certain conditions. Otherwise, the user will be sent to the store listed page to leave the review. If it is an Android device, it must have Google Play service installed and at least running Android 5 Lollipop. For iOS, to launch the native rating dialog, the user's device must be on iOS 10.3 or later. To support devices with iOS earlier than 10.3, we will need to add a special configuration in the info.plist file. But before we do that, let's first add the Rate My App package to our app by running this command in the terminal. When completed, it should add the package in the pubspec.yaml. Now, we can add this special configuration in the info.plist to support iOS earlier than 10.3. Now that the package is installed and configured, let's start implementing it. For that, we will start with a basic implementation of the package, and then later in the video, we will go into more complex scenarios. As I mentioned earlier, this package asks the user to leave a review only if some conditions are met. You can either configure the predefined conditions or define your own conditions, more on custom conditions later. To configure the predefined conditions, we need to create a Rate My App object. This object takes several parameters, but not all of them are required. So for this basic implementation, we will use only the min days and min launches. The min days is to specify the minimum days to wait after the installation before requesting the review. The same way, the min launches is the minimum times the user has to launch the app before the dialog box that will ask to leave a review pops up. Keep in mind that both of those conditions have to be met for the package to show the dialog box. That means, in this case, even if five days have passed since the user installed the app, until he or she opens it four times, the dialog box will not be shown. Now that we have specified the conditions, we need to check if they are met each time the app launches. For that, we will override the initState method and call the init method on the rate by app object. Then, we will first check if the dialog should open. This is the method that is responsible to check if the above conditions are met. If true, we want to show the rate dialog. As you can see, it takes many parameters, like a context which is required, a title for the dialog box, a message to kindly ask the user to leave a review for your app, then three buttons. The rate button to allow the user to leave the review, a no button if the user doesn't want to leave a review, a later button if the user prefers to leave a review later. On this list, this is to specify what should happen if the user dismisses the dialog box by tapping outside or by pressing the back button. In this case, it will emulate a letter button press. Now that everything is set, let's test it on Android. For this demo, we will set min days to zero so that we don't have to wait another day to see the dialog box and the min launches to two. That means we should see the dialog box after the second launch of the app. Also, we will add those two app IDs for Android and iOS to be able to navigate to our store listing page when we click the red button. More on that later. Finally, we will also add this piece of code to track the value of those properties in the debug console when the app launches. Now let's run it. Since it is the first time we are launching the app, we will not be asked to leave a review. The conditions are not met yet. Let's click here to launch it a second time. And as expected, the dialog box appears. Now, if we click no thanks, it will stop tracking and never show this dialog box again. And if we click maybe later, by default, 
The package will request a review after seven days and at least 10 launches. And of course, if we press the red button, it will send us to the App Store listing page. In this case, the Google Play Store. That was for Android. Now, if we test on iOS, we won't see the same dialog box, but instead, the package will try to open the native iOS review dialog box. As you can see here, this is a different dialog box. This is the default behavior of the package on iOS. I will show you how you can change this default behavior later. That was a simple implementation with some basic conditions and configurations. Now, if we want to have more specific conditions, for example, we want to change the default values for the reminders, we can do that by adding those two parameters to the read by app object. The remind launch is the number to subtract to the number of launches when the user clicks on the maybe later button. And the remind days is the number of days to add to the base date when the user clicks the maybe later button. Other than those conditions, we can also change the dialogue style using the dialogue style property. As you can see, it has a lot of properties that we can use to configure the style of the rate dialogue. For now, we will only change the color of the dialog box title and set it to color red accent. The listener property allows you to trigger other actions based on the button clicked by the user. There is also the ignore native dialog property which takes a boolean. By default, it is set to true for Android and false for iOS. You can use this property to specify when you want to use the custom dialog box to request a review or use the platform native dialog box as we saw earlier for iOS. Set it to true to always show your custom dialog box or to false if you prefer to use the in-app native dialog for the devices that meet the requirements we mentioned earlier. Now, let's see those new parameters in action on an iOS simulator. But before that, let's uninstall the app to make sure all the conditions will be reset. As expected, nothing appears for the first launch. If you restart the app, now we can see the dialog box. Since we set the ignore native dialog box property to true, we see our custom dialog box instead of the native one, even though we are on iOS. We also successfully changed the color of the dialog box title. Now let's click later and restart the app. As expected, nothing happens, and this is normal because we specified in the upread object to remind the user after two launches. Let's restart the app again. Now the conditions are met. If we click the red button, it should send us to the store listing page on the App Store. But since I'm on a simulator, this will not work. As explained in this video, you need a real device to open the store listing page on iOS. Now, if instead of this dialog with the three buttons, you prefer to request a review by showing a different one with a star rating bar, you can call the show star rate dialog instead of show rate dialog. As you can see, it takes almost the same parameters except for the star rating options that you can use to configure the stars and the action builder that you can use to define a list of action buttons. For now, we will only add a text button and in the on press callback, we can use the star value to know how the user feels about the app and based on that, take appropriate action. For example, if the user selects three or fewer stars, you can send him to a bug report dialog. If he selects four or five stars, you can use this code to simulate a red button click and ask him to leave a review directly in the app or send him to the app store listing page to leave a review. You have to keep in mind that this approach is not recommended. And if you want to implement something like that in your apps, you should make sure you follow the best practices of each app store. To learn more about the best practices, you can check this article or this one. The links will be in the description below. Now, to see this new dialog in action, let's uninstall the app and run it. This time, we'll set the minimum launch to zero just to see the dialog box right away. As you can see, we are using a different dialog box now. Based on the number of stars that it selects, we will take appropriate action. In this case, if it is less than four, we will do nothing. But if it is more than three, we will send him to the store listing. Again, as I mentioned earlier, use this approach with caution. Now, 
Here are some important things that you want to keep in mind, especially when testing this package. Real reviews cannot be created while testing. This is why we saw that the submit button was disabled here. This button will be enabled when your app is published in production. You are not required to initialize the package inside the init state. In fact, you can initialize it anywhere in your app using the Rate My App Builder widget. The only thing is that you should not initialize it more than once during the app lifecycle. Google Play Identifier and App Store Identifier are optional because the package can infer those values using your package name for Android and bundle ID for iOS. But if your app targets an iOS version earlier than 10.3, the App Store Identifier is required. Also, when testing, if your app is not yet published, you can temporarily set those store identifiers to the ones of another app that is already published. Just remember to replace them with your app identifiers before going to production. You can find those identifiers in the URL of the app page on the Google Play Store and on the iOS App Store. I showed where you can find your app IDs in this video. You should choose your conditions wisely because you don't want to annoy your users by requesting them to leave reviews over and over in a short period of time. Give them time to experience the app before requesting a review. As mentioned earlier, you are not required to only use the predefined conditions, minimum days and minimum launches. You can also set your own custom conditions. For that, you just have to extend the condition class and override these methods. To learn how to do that, check this example on the developer's GitHub page. Now, if you find this package too complex, watch this video where I show you how you can implement an easier and simpler package to request reviews from your users. If you found this video useful, please give us a like and subscribe for more.